Well, now that uh, spring is approaching and uh, the weather is starting to warm up, uh, the sun is actually coming out here in the Pacific Northwest. And as a result, uh, my solar panel is doing a very nice job of uh, keeping up with things. Actually, we keep the solar panel out and in place all year round. And even in the wintertime on sunny days, it does a pretty good job of keeping the batteries set up. It's nice not having to leave an electric battery charger turned on. The solar panel for us on this boat keeps up with all of our needs. Installing a solar panel on a boat is a fairly straightforward process. Now, there are people out there that are cruising the oceans of the world and are relying on solar power for everything on their boat, and they have boats that have a lot of electronics on them, inverters and everything else. Star White is a very basic boat. We do have basic electronics. We've got radios and we've got lighting and refrigeration and forced air heat. But all of those things combined typically only drink up about 25 amp hours a day. So we don't require a huge array of solar panels like many of the offshore boats that you might see. We find that the one 80 watt panel that we have takes care of all of our needs quite nicely. So installing a panel can be complicated if you've got one of these boats that's going offshore with several hundred or even a thousand watts of uh, solar charging capability. They require an, an arch or panels bolted down to cabin tops and tops of dodgers and such. In our case, we've fabricated a very basic mount on the stern pulpit that holds the panel quite nicely and allows it to articulate depending on where the sun is at. So, as I was saying, our solar panel installation is uh, fairly basic. This is a 80-watt uh, panel. It uh, is attached to the stern pulpit here on either side, and uh, we can articulate it up and down depending on where the sun's at. Most of the time when we're in our slip here, the sun is uh, south of us, so the panel is oriented this way. But uh, if we were tied up somewhere where the sun is on the opposite side, we can articulate it back, or we can turn it and make it perfectly flat. The back side of the panel, I've attached a piece of aluminum flat stock, which is just uh, screwed to the panel frame. And then I've attached these clamps on either side that wrap around this one inch stainless steel uh, post. This particular installation is straightforward. I put a couple of T-fittings on either side of the uh, stern pulpit here. These are the type that split open. So it was a simple matter of putting them on, clipping them shut. And then I measured the dimension across and had this uh, one inch piece of stainless tubing bent to fit that dimension. The nice thing about these slip on ones was if I mismeasured a little bit, I could just simply move this forward or aft to make it fit. The wiring from the panel is just wire tied uh, to the stern pulpit here, runs down, and then uh, enters the hull. The addition of these uh, wire ties that you see uh, frailing around in the wind is to uh, keep the darn birds from landing on the solar panel. <laughs> Prior to putting these on, I would come down and I would find this thing just covered with bird poop. So this is my solution and it seems to work. The uh, flashing yellow banner that you see is again an attempt to keep the darn birds off the boat. It's possible to spend a great deal of money on uh, through-hull fittings to prevent leaks, and they work quite well. But uh, what I did was, uh, well, just a little bit lesser expensive method, which I can't quite show, but uh, yeah, there we go. Um, I went with a through-hull fitting, which I just uh, installed through. I run the wires through there. That's also the uh, propane uh, hose going through there. And uh, then I filled it with a bedding compound. It seals quite nicely. Well, hopefully this is a little bit better view of the uh, through hull fitting. There are all sorts of solar controllers and regulators that one can purchase. Uh, this is one that I bought. I uh, picked this one up on the internet. Relatively inexpensive. 
there are some very expensive ones that can also be had. And the very expensive ones uh, do do uh, a few things that this one will not. But for the small amount of wattage that we're dealing with here, again, 80 watt panel, uh, this is quite adequate. I bought it because it had these uh, two USB plugs, the uh, white pieces you see there. <laughs> I've never actually used them because we've got USB outlets uh, elsewhere in the boat. But uh, very basic panel, it does everything that is needed. I've set up the wiring on Star White when we rewired the boat so that the uh, power coming out of the solar panel regulator goes to the common on the battery switch. That way I can control and move it from bank one to bank two as I wish. Uh, it's not necessarily the way everybody does it, but it works for me. There are lots of articles about marine electrical systems and amperage draw. All of the articles suggest making a list of your boat's electrical system and your best estimate of what the amperage needed to power everything. I've found using an hour meter gives me the most accurate numbers. I just temporarily wire the meter into a circuit at the power panel and make a note of the meter reading. 24 hours later, I unplug it and read it again to get my daily amperage draw for that particular circuit. The power consumption from our refrigeration, for example, will be drawing eight or more amps on startup, but as things cool down and the box chills down, the running time and average amperage draw drops significantly. Our typical 24-hour draw for the refrigeration is only 15 to 17 amp hours.